Time out. I'm telling you that, right now. That, that sweatshirt. It is a New York is, Knicks sweatshirt. That's not the Knicks colors. That's, uh, that, that you is, want it? Come over here. Lift up my mullet. I don't care about what it says. I'm not lift gonna, up my mullet I'm not and look you. and look at Dude. the tag. It's an NBA sweatshirt. You're, you're not, you want to look at it? Your mullet does not need to be touched any more during this show than it already <laughs> is. And, and by the way, I'm just telling you, that those are not the Nick colors. That is a Yankee sweatshirt that says New York on it. That's, that's fine. I mean, I, I, you want to bring a little love to the Yankee fans because the yep. spank in the afternoon has basically been that's the Malik. That's not I, what I'm doing. I understand doing. why you're doing it. Yeah, I Bo- thought you were Boomer right is that. right. You are right. 100%. Bob Usler would never approve of that. Yes. He, I had an old I, school New York, just a New York baseball shirt, and he just lit into me. This was 20 years ago. And much like Boomer, when he wears something well, that's for I, gays. I have that you know. J. Crew sweatshirt that I yeah, love yeah. that says New York on that, it. It's it a looks, Yankees thing. It's a J. It's a, Crew. It's, it's, a, 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 it's a J. A, a, Crew. Same rules. It, BS. No, no, no. No, it's Yankee a J. thing. That, no, no, no. That, that, could, that could double as a New York Yankees. That as could yours. But that, as would be yours. that would be something that Aaron Boone would be wearing on the bench. I know. Just like your thing. Al, ruling? Al got this for me. That's a Knicks sweatshirt. Exactly. That's not a Knicks sweatshirt. He that's bought not, it for me. That's not the Knicks colors. All right, so this Off is, the Knicks store. That's right. He it's bought not, it. He bought it, it for me. It's not the Knicks colors. That's a that's a Yankee. It's it's freaking. It's well, mid- opening day. Uh, it doesn't. It doesn't even matter. I yeah, wore, it matters I wore, to me. It bothers me. Well, you wore this J Crew thing. Let's forget about I it. I wore the J Crew if thing. If I would have known, Crew you would have been so focused on this, I wouldn't have put that it on. That is a Nike New York sweatshirt. It is, right. And exactly. The, and Nike is all over the Yankees and everything else. You know that. Well, it, this is what happened a couple years ago. Al gave me this. I even remember the card he yeah, wrote the in way there. You wore it on Met opening day. That's hey, the weird thing. Hey, listen. Remember the Met opening day that I thought was going to be Met opening day? Yes. Remember that? Yes. Remember I put on the you Met the shirt Met, you that had the day? Met pullover, yeah. Okay, there you go. So I can't believe and you're today, jumping. Now you're jumping ship no, again. No, I'm not. I, this is a Nick sweatshirt. So Al wrote in a card. He goes, this is a Nick sweatshirt. Well, and just because Al wrote the card that it was. I'm and sorry. it says NBA on the tag, you big galoot. Look at it. You want to <laughs> look at it? I'm telling you. Look at the tag. It's Met opening day. Look you're at the wearing tag. a Yankee sweatshirt. I'm not wearing it. It's a Nick sweatshirt. Yankee sweatshirt. 100% Yankee sweatshirt. So Al wrote in the card he wrote this is a nick sweatshirt and i got it for you because they're gonna suck and you can just say it's a new york sweatshirt that's what he said all right let's let's agree to disagree no no, no. you could say wrong. whatever you want you're wrong because there's an that's nba the yankee colors the, they, by the way what hey, are did, the nick colors anymore did the uh <laughs> did the yankees play in the nba uh, not that I know. Of. Okay, so then why would there be an NBA tag? I don't, I don't know, but the but the Knicks don't wear sweatshirts like uh. that. I've never seen a Nick wear a sweatshirt like that unless they were supporting the Yankees. Anyway, all right. Anyway, forget that. So, and, and the Knicks win that which they needed to win because of just a terrible performance against Dallas on Friday night. They needed to beat Detroit. They killed them. So they they got you know they they got to get this thing turned around. You know after losing three in a row, and hopefully they will. Um, but I, that basketball game between uh, UCLA and Gonzaga was unbelievable. Unbelievable basketball. And that was college basketball at its finest. It's, it had everything. It had the underdog that was pushing and pushing and pushing. It had the undefeated team that was trying to save their season that every time they needed a basket, they were able to get a basket. It goes into overtime. The only thing that would have made that shot – more impactful had Gonzaga been down. So if they were down a point or yeah. two points and mm-hmm. that shot was hit, then it would have been unbelievable. The fact that it was tied, it still was an unbelievable shot and a great shot uh, by Suggs, but it was just a magical, magical basketball game. You know, and I know like you could get on Twitter and give your instant reactions. Who really cares what you think, right? I mean, I don't care about what – we all thought the same well, thing. Everybody thought the I same thing. I think we thing. all yeah. thought the same thing, that we, we were given the joy of college basketball at such a high level and played so well. Uh, and, and these kids put everything into it. Everything. I mean, like, a, like a, it, it was a 100-mile-an-hour game. And that's why college basketball and, and the way that it was played with these two teams – is uh, a game that you could really, really fall in love with. For sure. I mean, it's just everybody's saying the same stuff about it, and it was Saturday night at this point, so I don't have much to add outside of the fact that it was 
what we had missed all last year. We didn't get a chance to watch the tournament last year. This tournament had been basically boring from start to finish, quite frankly. It didn't have any buzzer beaters. There was, I mean, a big Cinderella story as an 11 seed makes it to the Final Four, but it's right. the most storied franchise in the history of college basketball. So it's sort of like one of those deals where it didn't even feel like a Cinderella. And it was it was amazing. I was I was bummed out. I wanted Gonzaga to lose. I wanted UCLA to win. As that game was going on, I was even more so into the idea of UCLA winning that game. So I was bummed out. But, I mean, I don't know how you couldn't enjoy every minute of that. And with all the crap that's gone around in sports for I don't know how long now, uh, the better part of a year, uh, this was as pure as it got. And that's why the reaction was the way it was, which was overwhelmingly positive. It's something that you won't forget. There's a lot of recency bias when it comes to things these days in sports. This is the greatest thing. This is the greatest thing. This is the greatest thing. Uh, this game, though, you know, I'm not going to sit here and rank the best games in the history of oh, college start basketball. To finish, it was but unbelievable. it's one that we won't be forgetting for a long time. Start to finish, it was great. And uh, Mick Cronin's kids uh, deserve a lot of credit at UCLA. You know, they had to Man, they going through the history of what they had to go through to get actually into the tournament and then, you know, down by, what, 13 at one point to Michigan State in the playing game and the whole thing and the overtimes and all that other stuff, uh, those kids just showed an incredible, incredible heart and desire to try to get to where they were, they were trying to get to. And then, of course, you know, Mark Few's team is just so fundamentally sound. And I don't know about you, there are certain things that happen in games and you, you go, that's coaching. And one of those things, I think, happens on defense for Gonzaga. And what and it's when they decide to double team off of a, a like a high pick and roll. And I don't want to get into all these terms and But the, you'll do it anyway. But I'll do it anyway because yeah. it just makes a sense. No other team does what they do when they decide to double the ball handler off of a high pick and roll and how they do it. And it is really and to me that's coaching. That's teaching your kids how to play defense. And then obviously you gotta have the kids with the basketball IQ to understand all of that. And, you know, some of those kids are just terrific, terrific, fundamentally sound basketball players. And the way they play is the way I wish basketball was played by everybody. And, you know, they, they take threes no, you know, they're like every other team. But how many times are they, like, moving around and, and you know, bounce passing and picking and rolling and double picks and back to the basket and, and how many gimmies they get at, at, the, at, the, uh, at the rim? So this will be interesting tonight, watching them against Baylor, who basically just goes balls to the wall. You know, I like watching them play. I like watching minutes. both these teams play. Yeah. I mean, neither one of these programs mean a thing to me, but clearly they've been two of the best in college basketball the entire year. A lot of people have been wanting this final for a long time, but we're never going to get a better game than we got Saturday night. So it's Maybe almost we like, will. Who knows? Ah, I'd be shocked if we did, but... Uh, hopefully it's a good, I mean, what is it, a 9-20-something tip Gonzaga tonight? Gonzaga's a four-and-a-half-point favorite. Uh, yeah, all right, that makes, about, that makes some sense. Uh, Baylor was a lock against Houston, by the way. They went into that game a five-point favorite and just took off and just murdered them uh, the entire game as that first game on Saturday. So I'm I'm hoping for a good one. The tournament itself hasn't been, if you're just ranking them against other tournaments, you really didn't have great moments until that game on Saturday. So if you get that classic in the final four and in another classic championship game uh that's all you want i just kind of have a feeling that it should be a classic game only because you have one team who's undefeated and there have been seven previous undefeated teams those teams included players like bill walton and bill russell and i believe lou alcinder when <laughs> he was at ucla before he changed his name to uh, kareem abdul jabbar um, so you, you've had, you've had a lot of great players that have been a part of undefeated teams. The last undefeated team, 1976, that would be Indiana. Their leading scorer was Scott May. So here you go. You have, you have a chance to see history tonight and they have a chance to join seven other teams that have gone wire to wire. And that's part of the excitement, I think of uh, of watching this game tonight and seeing whether or not they can pull it off. Yeah, I, I don't know why it is that I haven't been able to totally embrace the Gonzaga undefeated story. I don't know what it... Because usually I'm into that. Usually I'm into the greatness of a team and a program. But I just have not been able to embrace the whole deal. 
Now, maybe it's because they've never had a team that's actually finished the job. Maybe it's the fact that it's Gonzaga and it's all the way out on the West Coast and you know they've only recently become a brand name in college basketball. I don't know, but I wanted UCLA to win badly. And sometimes when I go into games and I'm like, I don't know who I'm going to root for before the game, and then it just makes it clear as the game goes on when there's two teams that I don't really care that much about. But as this game was going on, I was like, totally is it UCLA why, why, winning the game? Go, just because of the upset, the whole thing? I don't know. I mean, I, I just I, I just love the way the uniforms looked, and I was like, this team went from a first four team to here, and they're going to knock off the the undefeated Gonzaga See, team. I was the other way around. Yeah, I don't. I was, I was into it. I want to see an undefeated team. I want to see them beat Baylor tonight, and I want to see them deal with all the stuff that they have to deal with. And I know their their schedule wasn't all you know nearly as difficult as some of the Power Five conference schedules and all that. We all understand that, but still, man, they play a a, a pure form of basketball that you very rarely see. And I don't. There's something about the way that they play and how they. Uh, they move around on offense. The, some of the things that they do on defense, and hey, look, UCLA has got some players, man. That you know, you don't realize. Like, why? What took them so long to get their season, you know, on track and to get where they were? I mean, they, they looked literally like one. They are they one, are, the, best, one yeah. of the best players in college ba- teams in college basketball, but it didn't show up until the last five or six games, which is amazing to me. And that's just goes to show you that no matter what sport it is. Get on a run, see if you could stay on a run, and then you know take that run all the way to a championship. Now to be able to do it from week one and game one to all the way to game what thirty one, I guess this will be for uh, the Zags uh, would would be truly amazing. Much like you know Stanford was the number one women's team in their bracket, and they won the national championship. Yeah, they, so they went wire to wire. I like that Arizona coach. With the, Why? Because she's flipping the finger. Oh, it was great. No, because they're playing Connecticut. I know. Like, Screw them. She, that, yeah, basically that, it was either exactly F worked. them or F everybody or something, whatever it was. Yeah. But I, I don't know. I love that. And then people are criticizing that. Give me uh, a break. God, I mean, so, so stupid. They, it was they, awesome, man. These are pe- the people that criticize that are people that have never ever been in the intensity of that moment. And what she is trying to get across to her kids. Sure. And did you see how her kids reacted to it her? It was crazy. It was amazing. Exactly. And that, you know what? To me, that's all that matters. Mm-hmm. The kids want it. The kids wanted it from her. She gave it to them. She was enough with Gino Oriema and UConn and Paige Beckers and enough of all this crap in the history. We're going to beat them. And, you know, and, 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 you know, we've both had coaches in our life. Now, I've had coaches from high school all the way through college, and not so much in the pros, but in college and high school, that, that coaches would it would always be us against whoever we were playing against and the fact that nobody ever thought we could beat them. And they would play that same kind of emotional, mental, psychological ploy against us as players, and we bought into it. We loved it. Sure. And especially when you win. And clearly these Arizona players loved oh, it as well. One hundred percent they did. And and you know, like again, who's criticizing this coach for doing yeah. that within the body of her team? Couple tight asses out there. I That's mean, what it is. Come on. Couple yeah, tight again, asses. Again, people who have never been in the moment. People who have never sat there and the athletes absolutely loved it. Loved it. Every minute of it. Yeah. So that was uh that was fun to see. And uh, hopefully get a good championship game. Tip off after 9 o'clock always annoys me. I have to say that. I'm sorry. It just does. And I understand that the West Coast and that whole situation. But make it. Excuse me. Make it in the 8 o'clock hour. Just please. It just saves everybody a one hour. Especially those of us who are up right now. Who always have to get up early and do stuff. Uh, especially our friends like our buddy, the sanitation worker, who says he's up every day listening to us with the headphones. That guy wants to stay up and watch the game, too. But he's got to do manual labor in the early hours of the morning. That always annoys me with the TV stuff starting after 9 o'clock. All right, what we'll do is we'll take a break here. We've got lots of baseball to get into with the Mets starting their season finally today. The Yankees losing a real sleepy game yesterday at Yankee Stadium the against the the, it whole, was, the whole weekend. Was oh, sleepy. just just brutal they offensively. Get a hit at all? Really frustrating. Uh, Aaron Judge obviously not a great start for him. They were able to hold this Toronto Blue Jays lineup down for the most part. Still couldn't win uh, more than one game over the weekend. Thank you for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And don't forget to hit the red bell so you're notified when we have new content.